Hello world and welcome to the Genesis Bible study. Do not forget to put your questions in the comments and to like and subscribe. Today we're looking at lesson 5 which is day 4 and we'll be looking at some biblical astronomy or shall we say astronomy in the light of the Bible. First we'll read though the text is Genesis 1 verses 14 to 19. This is the creation on day 4. It says, And God said, Let there be lights in the expanse of heavens to separate the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons, and for days and years. And let them, and let them be lights in the expanse of the heavens to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made the two great lights, the great light to rule the day, the lesser light to rule the night, and the stars. And God set them above the expanse of the heavens to give light on the earth to rule over the day and over the night. And to separate the light from darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the fourth day. In Psalms 8 verse 3. It says, When I look at your heavens, at the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place. It is amazing to stand in awe of the universe. Its size, what we can see there, the beauty that is in it. Psalms 19 1 says, The heavens declare the glory of God and the sky above proclaim his handiwork the um, universe has got some amazing things in it here we see a nebula which is a gas uh, cloud as it were in space amazing colors because of what is inside it another one absolutely stunning things more gas clouds there are some beautiful things in the universe here we see a spiral galaxy also again wonderful things to see this is uh, taken from the hubble telescope which is pointed out into deep space and we see some lovely uh, photo of as deep as we can go and we see again some lovely galaxies out there and stars another spiral galaxy and another nebula it's amazing actually um, the things we can see and study from planet earth and the amazing thing is our planet is actually placed perfectly in the universe to study the universe um, from a, for a Christian viewpoint, you'd almost think God wanted us to look and to study and to see what's out there. Hence, he put us in this position. Also, it's amazing to think how perfectly placed we are according, uh, at least from distance to the sun, in order to have the right temperatures f to support life. Also, the tilt of the Earth's axis in order to create seasons. Um, it's amazing. The makeup of our atmosphere, which is perfect for life. The ozone layer, which protects us from harmful radiation, harmful radiation from the sun, but also from um, whatever else is out there, um, other radiation. So it's amazing. The rotation of the Earth around the sun, how well it's placed, how perfectly it's placed. It is amazing. And what's amazing with this perfect planet out there is people are now looking for planets, which we call the Goldilocks planet, which is perfectly placed in the universe. Not too close, not too far from its star, the perfect distance. The tilt of its axis has to be perfect, not too much, not too little. The makeup of the atmosphere um, has got to be right. It's got to have some form of protection from harmful radiation as well. And its rotation has got to be right. All because of one reason, they're searching for alien life. We often have the joke, uh, they're looking for intelligent life, but we don't even have any on our planet. But to be honest, what the idea is, is they're looking for life on other planets. Now the question is, is there life out there? Uh, to be honest, the Bible doesn't really say that there is, but it also doesn't say that there isn't. Um, but I personally don't believe that you'll find life like us out there. And the reason I say that is when you read in the Bible, for instance, 1 Peter 3, 18, it says, For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God being put to death in the flesh and made alive in the spirit. The important thing is his Christ suffered once for sins. It means he died once. He came as a man to die for mankind. He was human for the humans. If there is other life out there on our level, it means Jesus didn't come to die for them. And that seems very weird then. Or should Jesus have come multiple times? But then the Bible would be lying if it says he died once for sins. So, as far as this text is concerned, I do not expect to find alien life out there, uh, not like us. If you find a bacteria or a microbe, yes, you come again on the definition of life, but uh, for uh, life on the equivalence of us as humans, I don't believe there is out there for this reason. 
Something else amazing to look at, we saw the creation of the moon, an amazing object uh, surrounding our planet. It's a natural satellite. And as we see, it uh, has had a lot of hits because it's a protection for planet Earth. It collects a lot of the harmful objects that would have crashed into Earth um, and has taken a lot of hits. So in a way, it's uh, extra protection. Um, it's also perfectly placed to create the tides, which is good for the cleaning of the planet and for its um, ecosphere in the waters. An interesting thing is it is drifting away from Earth, though, about four centimeters a year. And when you play backwards, it means 1.4 billion years ago, the Earth and the Moon would have been occupying the exact same place. It kind of gives you the idea that the Earth cannot be 4.5 billion years old, because unless it picked up the Moon about a billion years ago. But that's not the case. So, when we think about the origin of the Earth, there are many theories out there. One of them is that it split off from Earth. Um, the idea was Earth began to spin so fast, a piece was broken off. But the problem is, the Moon and the Earth are made out of different stuff. They cannot have come from the same source. So the Earth couldn't have had a piece split off to be the Moon, because the Moon is something else totally different. Also, the Earth cannot spin fast enough for a piece to break off or for it to split into two. And the Moon would not survive the split. So, what other ideas do we have? Well, it could be a captured object. Something was coming past and was caught in Earth's gravity. One problem with this model, though, an object would more likely slingshot away than be caught in the gravity. So, Another theory is was developed at the same time of the Earth, except the general way these things would have formed, based on the models, you would have had one bigger planet, not two smaller bodies. So that also doesn't work. So the question is, is the origin of the Earth a mystery? Well, no. It says God made the two greater lights, the greater light rule the day, being the sun, the lesser light, the night. So we know God did it somehow. But that's, um, I suppose, his way of doing things. He created it. He spoke it into existence. Something else we see out there, we see some lovely comets. They're balls of ice and dust traveling, uh, losing a lot of uh, their um, makeup, creating those beautiful tails. Where do comets come from? We have enough comets uh, at the moment to account for about 10,000 years of history. In other words, comet should have burnt out a long time ago. So where do they come from? The going theory is they come from the Oort cloud. This is a picture of the Oort cloud. Yes, you see nothing because there is no evidence for the Oort cloud. What happened is Jan Henrik Oort ever came up with this idea simply to explain where they came from. But as we've been looking further and further and can see further than the Kuiper belt, we can see there is no Oort cloud. There is no place for comets to come. And so they are still unaccounted for. Then we get supernovas, huge explosions in space when stars uh, die. We have about 200 supernovas that we know of in history, which accounts for enough for about 7,000 years of history at most. And again, no idea where the rest of them would have gone to then. We have some lovely spiral-shaped galaxies out there. The thing is, if we had enough time, you shouldn't see these beautiful spirals because they are drifting apart and with... 15 billion years of history, they should have been misformed into something else already. Also, I showed you the picture from Hubble. The reason why they take these pictures is the idea or the theory was the further deeper into space we look, the more into the past we will look and we'll see maybe the formation of galaxies. Except the deeper we look, every time we look, we find spiral galaxies. These things are already formed. They're already there. So it doesn't look like the universe can be billions of years old simply by the things we see we have ready formed galaxies that are still holding their shape we have only enough supernovas for a few thousand years of history we have nowhere to replenish the comets and i know what people are going to ask if god created the universe six thousand years ago why do we see light from millions of light years away good question firstly what is a light year Let's start with the equation velocity or speed is distance divided by time. It's not hard. We all say we drove 60 kilometers an hour or 60 miles an hour. It's pretty much our speed is distance the kilometers divided by the time the hour. And the speed of light, by the way, is very fast. And when we work it out, 
we can see that light in a year travels a little under 10 trillion kilometers. That is a lot. But a light year is not a time measurement. It's a distance measurement when you work it out. So we're talking about large distances. How did it travel? Well, there are possible solutions for what we call the distance starlight problem. Uh, easiest one, I guess you could say God created the, that way. It's possible. Um, but what we've also uh, seen in uh, an earlier study is we went through a lot of texts where it says the heavens were stretched out. So we know and we see that the universe is still stretching out. It's possible that the universe, when God created it, that he stretched it out faster than the speed of light, which would give us the idea that we can see um, millions of light years into the distance, but that it was stretched out a lot quicker. Um, another thing is the question of is the equation um, really standard because one of the things we say speed of light is constant is that the case some people theorize that it's not and that it is actually slowing down in other words it means it was faster in the past it is possible um, there have also been experiments being done where they've shown the speed of light um, can be influenced by a different medium uh, to make it quicker or slower so it's, is it really that constant um, generally we say yes but maybe in the past it wasn't distance uh, to the stars might be uh, not as great as they claimed I mean we are working with a very very small angle to calculate star distance um, so there are people who say that's not the case and we also know that time is affected by gravity it will time will go faster or slow in different parts so it's very possible Earth is 6,000 years old and there is light out there that is millions of years old or billions of years old um, and has been traveling through a different gravity uh, level than we have had. But these are all just theories. It's very hard to sort out the problem. Um, the problem might also be solved if we can solve the horizon problem. But the horizon problem isn't a problem for um, those of us who believe in the Bible. It's a big bang problem. You see, the, uh, the, one of the things I've noticed is for the universe to be as big as it is, there are parts of the universe that should never have had contact with each other and are so far apart, they shouldn't even be able to see the light from that part of the galaxy yet, or from that part of the universe. Yet, when they look at it, everything's the same. Temperatures match, the amount of radiation matches. Th that is uh, the horizon problem. And so, while we as creationists have to sort out this distant starlight problem, People who believe in evolution and a old universe have to sort out the horizon problem, and they're pretty much the same problem. So, to not want to believe in the Bible for the starlight problem is not a valid problem, because then you can also ditch the Big Bang Theory, and then you're left with nothing. So, my point is, let's see what the evidence points to the best, and I would point it to the Bible and to creation. Anyway, thank you for listening. Um, I hope uh, this helps you out. And stay tuned for the next lesson.